Welcome back. In this video, we are going to tackle tokenization. You need to understand why it's important and how to implement it in Python. Let's do it. Tokenization is the process of breaking down text into smaller pieces, usually words or phrases called tokens. Think of it like slicing a loaf of bread into individual pieces. So each slice or token represents a manageable piece of the whole text. Imagine that you're reading a book. Tokenization is like dividing the text into individual words or sentences, making it easier to analyze and process. This step is foundational for many natural language processing tasks or NLP, and that, of course, includes information uh, retrieval. When it comes to why it is important, um, we need to have in mind that first, it simplifies text processing, uh, so breaking it down makes it easier to analyze and process, so it allows algorithms to work with manageable units of text. Then it also facilitates indexing, so in information retrieval, indexing relies on tokens. By tokenizing text, you create an index of terms that can be quickly searched, as well enables data cleaning. So tokenization helps in identifying and removing unwanted characters or words like punctuation or stop words from the text, and as well supports language understanding, allows machines to understand and process human language more effectively paving the way to even more advanced NLP tasks. Now, there are three main ways to tokenize text, each serving a different purpose. Uh, first would be word tokenization, so splits text into individual words. This is the most common form of tokenization. Then we have sentence tokenization, so splits text into sentences, useful for tasks that require sentence level analysis. And then finally, character tokenization, so splits text into individual characters. This is less common, but useful for certain NLP tasks like character level language modeling. Now, of course, there are um, some challenges when it comes to tokenization, so deciding whether to remove or keep punctuation can impact the analysis. Sometimes uh, a dot or a comma does affect the meaning. Um, also dealing with compound words, so words like ice cream, mother-in-law, need special handling, handling special characters, emojis, hashtags, and other special characters that may exist in different languages need to address appropriately. And, of course, language differences. Um, different languages have different tokenization rules, uh, especially languages without uh, clear word boundaries, like uh, Chinese or Japanese. Um, I live in Germany as well, so uh, there's a lot of compound words here. Um, therefore, you also need to break down within those words, which makes it a much different way or, uh, of dealing. Now, when we do it in Python and when we get hands-on with the implementation, we'll use uh, NLTK, so Natural Language Toolkit, uh, which provides easy-to-use functions for tokenization. So. Let's have a look at this example. So we would import NLTK. We would download punct. Um, this is um, the way to tokenize. Imagine this sample text. Sailing in Croatia offers stunning views of the Adriatic Sea. The best-selling routes in Croatia include Dubrovnik and Split. Then we would have word tokenization, right? So if we want to tokenize in words or if we want to tokenize in sentences. If we tokenize it, so this will be the output. Word tokens would then have like sailing in Croatia offers so all of the words. But sentence tokens would split it into two, so one for each of the sentences. Now, if we take one uh, step further when it comes to pre-processing text, um, we take it one step further by, for instance, uh, removing um, any tokens that are not alphanumeric, and even converting the text to lowercase. 
this is how it could be so we would do word tokenization we would convert it to lowercase and we would just focus on words that are alpha numeric and we would have these examples we would then pre-process each of the sentences and then we would have this right so sailing in croatia offers stunning views of the adriatic uh, sea this is what we would get out of it also um now that i have a look at it it does feel like a sentence tokenization right but have in mind that i'm currently just pre-processing each of the documents so i want to tokenize everything so i look at it from a word perspective um and then at the very end i get a list so actually let me show it to you so i'll get i'll return a word and inside each list um i would get all of the words all of this i'm going to show it to you um in the next videos i don't know i don't think it's the next one but maybe in a couple um this is just for you to have let's say a heads up to what we will do now this was of course the output and then when it comes to practical tips for effective tokenization um so the main thing that you need to do is to pre-process the text or so clean and normalize the text before tokenization so remove unnecessary characters and convert the text to lowercase handle stop words so words like d and is and of course always based on the use case but removing them um, is usually helpful then consider context so be mindful of the context in which the tokenization is used different tasks may require different tokenization strategies and as always test and iterate so test see if it works um, this is not a one solution fits all kind of thing uh, you do need to think about it and plan ahead now as a closing thought tokenization might seem like a simple process but it's an absolutely critical step in handling and analyzing text data and you do need to understand um, all of these different ways of tokenizing effectively um, because that will actually lay a very strong foundation for more complex tasks in this course and otherwise i'll see you in the next video